Welcome to Top Notch Online TV, a paragon of excellence. Thank you for joining us, viewers. Today with you is Teacher Rispa, a teacher from PCA Kikuyu High School. I teach English and Literature. I'm an examiner as well as an author. We still continue to delve deeper into the understanding of Kazuo Ishiguro's An Artist of the Floating World. Today we are going into further analysis where we are going to talk about character and characterization. If I can go to the uh, details about character and characterization, let me, let me define a few terminologies. To begin with, let's talk about character. Character or characters, they are the people that the author decides to use to convey his or her own message. Then you go to characterization. Characterization, you're talking about attributing of traits to a character. How does a character behave that becomes the characterization? And then we have the traits, now the character traits. Someone's behavior, a character's behavior. And when you're talking about a character's behavior, we are focusing on how they're behaving. What does the author say about them? What do other people say about them? And also, how do they interact, when they're interacting with other people, how much can you tell about their character? That is it, about our character and characterization. If you missed out on any episode on the plot development, you can find all the episodes, they're available on YouTube, Top Notch Online TV. As I'll be talking about characters, I'll start by talking about our major character, our major character by the name of Masuji Ono. Masuji Ono is in fact the narrator in this particular story of an artist of the floating world and even the artist we are talking about Masuji Ono. In, uh, talk, in uh, discussing Masuji Ono, let's look at what kind of a person is he and who really is Masuji Ono. Masuji Ono, first of all, if we could describe him, he has been a painter, a very famous painter, but his popularity is now fading. With the loss of the war, uh, with the loss of Japan in the war, we find that his character, uh, we find that his reputation is now fading. He's no longer popular. In fact, he is becoming infamous. That is it about Masuji Ono. Let's look at the traits. How does Masuji Ono behave? What, uh, what traits can we attribute to Masuji Ono? We are saying, first of all, is that Masuji Ono, from our understanding of him, he is someone respectable. A respectable person is one who commands the respect of other people. Uh, it is not really reliable when someone is being the first narrator, when you are uh, first person narration, it tends to be biased. The person who is giving the story tends to portray himself in positive light. But then we shall discuss from what the details of the book are giving. And from the details of the book, he is respectable. Someone who commands respect. First of all, we are being told that he acquired his current house from Akira uh, Sugumira on the basis of honor. He wanted his house to go to someone who would, someone who is honorable. Therefore, you can conclude that Masuji Ono is honorable and respectable. We've seen uh, Masuji Ono as being someone who's respectable. We still have another illustration that the, the character is respectable. Uh, let's look at the fact that, a second illustration, you look at the fact that Mrs. Kawakami's uh, pub was declining. It did not have a lot of customers. And when she was seeking advice on how to make her, uh, make her pub to be packed up, we are learning from Shintaro that he believes that Masuji Ono can bring back the crowd that makes him someone who's respectable. We're also looking at another third illustration to confirm that Masuji Ono is respectable. Let's look at the third illustration whereby we are talking about Dr. Saito. The first time that he met Masuji Ono, we are being told that he, comment, uh, he commented on the fact that it is quite an honor to have someone of his teacher, someone of his caliber living among them. That brings out Masuji Ono as respectable, our first character trait. A second character trait, let's look at Masuji Ono as influential. He had been influential, but as the, as the novel uh, moves on, we are learning that he's influence was now winning but before that you can get at least a few illustrations of the fact that he's influential influential in the in the fact that Matsuda 
had sought the company of Masuji Ono so that they can paint the propagandist kind of paintings. He wanted him to be part of that group, therefore he is influential. A second illustration to, uh, to speak to the fact that he's influential, we are looking at Ichiro had asked the grandfather, I'm being told you used to be someone famous, but then you had to put away your painting your paintings, the fact that they know that he was famous brings him out as someone influential, someone well known. We move to another third character trait of Masuji Ono. Let's talk about him as evasive. When Masuji Ono does not want to discuss a certain aspect, he hides under the guise of forgetfulness. When he's being asked, Father, could you be knowing the reason as to why the Miyake has pulled out? He now goes ahead and he's, uh, he's uh, feigning some kind of forgetfulness. At other times, you're seeing that he digresses and such kind of things. He is evading to give some information. Ono is also someone we can call loving, strokering. There's some kind of, uh, this is an issue that Ono doesn't want to discuss, but then when it comes to his own family, he decides, I will take the bull by the horns. His past has come back to haunt him, but for the sake of his daughter, uh, uh, Setsuko had already warned him. Last year, our sister's engagement did not sail through because of something to do with your past. Could you take some precaution on the same? And this guy, even though he has been uh, avoiding to talk about his, uh, his past, for the sake of his younger daughter Noriko, he decides to go and face his past by going to seek out Matsuda as well as Kuroda and straighten up things. He's also chauvinistic. A chauvinistic person is one who has, who favors his own side. If it is a male, they feel that the male are, uh, everything that is favorable needs to belong to the male. And he seems to have a low opinion of women, therefore we are calling him chauvinistic. An illustration to point out on the fact that he is chauvinistic, Masuji Ono, the way he speaks to his grandson about the female folk, we, it brings him out as, it brings him out as chauvinistic. For example, your mother and your auntie will be so scared to watch Godzilla that that portrays him to our, uh, that brings out the fact that he believes the women cannot be that courageous. Another trait of Masuji Ono, he's the main character, therefore maybe when you're talking about him, we might be having a lot to say about him. He's also treacherous. A treacherous person is one who is inclined to betray. They can easily betray. And we see such an illustration when Masuji Ono decides to report Kuroda to the authorities. Kuroda had been someone who held Masuji Ono in high esteem. We are expecting that uh, he can do better than that, but he goes and reports Kuroda to the authorities. He had the, the trust of Kuroda, the trust that he would be doing what is positive, but then he goes ahead and reports him to the authorities, but later on claiming that he only wanted Kuroda to be warned, but he didn't expect that it will escalate to an extent that he is being detained. Another trait of Masuji Ono, the guy is decisive. A decisive person easily makes a decision. And among the decisions he makes, even though he's not very sure about the future, but he decides to take a leap of faith and delve into the future. For instance, we are seeing that Mas uh, Masuji Ono as a young man, his father had been against him taking uh, following the path of being an artist. But then he told his mother, he didn't face the father, but he told the mother, even if my paintings have been ma have been burned, you've actually strengthened my resolve into becoming an artist. And we see that later on, he actually becomes an artist. Still not decisive. We see that Masuji Ono decides uh, to let go of Morisan and pursue his path in life. Despite Morisan threatening him that, if you're not going to abandon your kind of painting, I'll not, I'll, I'm afraid I'll not be hosting you in my villa anymore. But the guy goes ahead, forges his path, and now he goes ahead painting propagandist kind of kind of paintings, and he's evicted from Morisan's villa. Uh, that's what you can uh, we can see about uh, Masuji Ono, and it is not that we have exhausted all his traits. Other traits can still come up, and we are up for discussion. Let's look at another character, a character by the name of Setsuko. Setsuko generally in description, first of all, you get to understand our character in uh, description. 
Setsuko is the elder, because there are two, she's the elder daughter of Masuji Ono. We are being told she was not as pretty as her younger sister Noriko, and they used to joke about that she will bloom in the summer. She'll get beautiful later on in life. And you can see the father, when he's observing Setsuko, he actually says, my wife knew what she was saying. My daughter, as an adult, she has really bloomed. She's actually growing beautiful day by day. Setsuko, not much can be said about her, but one among her character traits, she is cautious. Cautious on the fact that if they don't make amends, what happened the previous year about the Miyakes pulling out of their marriage negotiations can happen in the, uh, in, the, in the present year as well. Therefore, she tells the father, make amends. And the father goes out to make the amends. We see that later on the marriage negotiations, they sail through. Away from being cautious, number two, let's talk about Noriko as being strict. Noriko is bringing her son, he's, she is bringing up her son in a strict kind of way. For example, the grandfather had proposed, why can't uh, Ichiro have sick? I don't know whether to pronounce it as sake or sick, but let me just read it in English, sick. It is an alcoholic drink. And the and Setsuko had come out strongly and opposed the father that the, ya, the young man, the son is such a young man to be having an alcoholic drink at that age. That is Setsuko, strict as our second character trait. Our third character trait of Setsuko, let's look at her as being sacrificial. Someone who lets go of something for the sake of another person's benefit. Illustration number one. We look at, uh, there was a conflict between Noriko and the father. Each one of them was being headstrong. They wanted their idea to be the one to be followed. Noriko had decided she'll be visiting the deer park and she wanted to take the whole family inclusive of uh, young Ichiro. When the father declined to go with them to the deer park, we see that Setsuko sacrificed her time and she decided I'll stay behind. Now that dad is not going, I'll also stay behind and keep my father company that is being sacrificial. Another illustration at being sacrificial, we are looking at Nori, uh, we are looking at Setsuko. There's also the time that the father and Ichiro wanted to go to the movies to watch Godzilla, but then uh, Noriko was not willing to accompany them. For a second time, she sacrifices and remains behind with Noriko. That is it about Setsuko. We cannot say so much about her. She's not really a major character. Still on the family of Ono, let's talk about a third character, a character by the name uh, by the a character by the name of Noriko. Noriko is the younger, prettier daughter. She had been engaged. She had been she had been in negotiations to be married off to the Miyake's family, but later on, because of her father's past, the Miyake's family they pull out. Therefore, she's not able to marry Jiro Jiro Miyake. She had thought that marrying Jiro Miyake. Would, be a, would have been a walk in the park because the negotiations to her were a simple formality. They had been in love, therefore they knew the Miyai was just a formality. Therefore, when the family pulled out, we are seeing that she was, uh, she was hurt by the fact. About Noriko, let's look at her as playful. And um, we see her playing with Ichiro, therefore it brings her out as playful. And at the same time, the father and the sister describe her as she is good with children. They describe the fact that she is good with children, bringing her out as someone who is playful. Apart from being playful, another trait of Setsuko is that she is bold or she is outspoken. She has that courage to say what she wants to say. For example, she keeps poking fun at the father she says that the father, he does nothing nowadays but mopping. Mopping is mopping around to be in a bad mood always. He's always in a bad mood. She says it out loudly. And at a certain time, because they're arguing about whether to go to the deer park, whether to go to uh, watch the movie of Godzilla, Ichiro ends up running away and she confronts the father telling him, now see what you've done. You've scared away the boy. She's not afraid to speak out her mind. It brings her out as outspoken or even bold. The, the boldness comes in the fact that she is ready to speak out. We go to a fourth character, a character by the name of Matsuda. It is good that you listen to this uh, character so that they are named from a foreign country. You need to get familiarized with the characters. Matsuda. Who is Matsuda? 
Matsuda is what you can describe as an art enthusiast. He works for Okada Shingen. Okada Shingen is an exhibition, an exhibition where upcoming artists, upcoming art, uh, upcoming artists as well as writer would come to showcase their talent, hoping to be discovered. That is the Okada Shingen for you. And he was working for the Okada Shingen. He had also played a hand in in connecting Ono to his late wife Michiko. And at the same time, he was the one who had recruited Ono into painting the propagandist kinds of painting. Among the traits of Matsuda, let's look at him as grateful. Number one, Matsuda is grateful. How is he grateful? He's grateful when we are able to see this character when Ono visits him. He's saying that among the people they used to, to be accused of the same thing, maybe inciting, arousing nationalism in the people that ended up in Japan losing the war, some people's wealth had been confiscated. However, he is grateful to the fact, he is grateful of the fact that he had been allowed to keep his wealth. That is it about, uh, that is it about Matsuda being grateful. Apart from being grateful, he is also well-meaning, someone who wishes good upon other people. And uh, Matsuda being well-meaning, we can find it in a number of illustrations. Number one, we are looking at Matsuda when Ono visits him. Ono tells him, if the investigator comes upon you, I'm hoping you'll be cautious on what you say. And then Matsuda tells him, as much as we, we did not part on very amicable grounds, all I remember about you are good things. In other words, he's telling, uh, he's telling uh, Ono, don't worry about me. I'll have nothing but the best to say about you. That is someone who is well-meaning. Apart from that, we see him getting excited when other people's ventures turn out, for the, turn out to be positive. For example, when Ono sees him another, uh, on another visit, he's glad that Ono has taken back to painting. At the same time, he is happy that Ono's daughter's marriage materialized that he is well-meaning. A third illustration to show that Matsuda is well-meaning, let's look at the fact that he played a hand in Michiko and Ono getting married. There's a role that he played ensuring that they get married because the go-between go was doing a lot of nothing to ensure the same. Another character trait of Matsuda, let's look at him as someone insistent, someone who does not take no for an answer. And I'll uh, give an illustration of, there's a time uh, the Okada Shingen had written to Ono, they were interested in his services, they were interested in recruiting him. But then Ono had given a reply that he was not interested. And when someone is not interested, most people would give up at that juncture, but not Matsuda. Matsuda decides to look out for Ono. He goes ahead to, to look for him. And when he looks for Ono, he still extends the invitation, I'd like you to join us. And even after Ono expresses that, he wouldn't wish to go against his teacher. He's not willing to go that way. Still, Matsuda is insistent by leaving behind his business card. Business card with the intention that if you change your mind, you can always reach out to me. That was our, that was our fourth character. We've talked about Matsuda. Our fifth character, let's talk about Shintaro. Shintaro, who is Shintaro? Shintaro had also been one among Ono's, one among Ono's uh, students and According to Ono, he can be described as one who was a tortoise in that he had a slow pace in learning. Uh, Shintaro, according to Ono, he was not among the best, but still a student of, majorly you can talk about him as being a student of Ono. They later fell out and we're later seeing him, we, we are later seeing him as seeking a job to work at a certain high school as an art teacher where he'll be needing the a good word from his former teacher, that is Shintaro. And then about Shintaro, character traits. Shintaro is grateful. Shintaro is grateful uh, over the fact that Ono had helped his brother, his brother to, his brother to acquire a white collar job. They had gone 
to Ono as a referee and Ono had given her Ono had recommended them and the brother ended up getting a job and over and over we see that Shintaro expresses his gratitude not once but many times for that particular favor we are also looking at Shintaro as cowardly someone who is marked with a lot of cowardice he is someone who thrives in fear we are being told that when other young men were being drafted into the war when japan was going into war young men young men are young men are getting drafted into the war but then shintaro hides away he is painting he had even hidden away for two weeks just painting until lastly they had got a hold of him and as they wanted to draft him into the war the war was already over and he was claiming he had a bad leg but his cowardice comes out uh, he he's Cowardice comes out. He's also cowardly on the fact that he cannot take responsibility for what he has already done. When he wants that job at the high school, he has to dissociate himself with certain paintings he did during the China crisis that they were paintings that were making people aggressive, arousing people to attack China. Now that this thing became infamous, he doesn't want to own up to the fact. He wants he is telling the committee that he was working under the he was working under the instructions of the teacher he's he was not for that idea he cannot own up to his mistake that brings him out as cowardly and the last character trait of shintaro let's look at him as endearing endearing is someone who wants to be loved by other people they, also, they always want to be in favor of other people acting acting very acting nicely towards people so that they can be loved he is endearing and his endearing nature comes out in the fact that he is ever praising his teacher masuji ono and masuji ono is someone who loves having his massage uh, have uh, is someone who loves having his ego massaged he loves to, his ego to be massaged therefore he does not mind the company of shintaro even though shintaro was not a promising kind of artist but then the fact that he keeps praising the teacher is makes the teacher feel flattered and the teacher does not mind hanging around hanging around him we are still looking at another sixth character trait we are looking at kuroda kuroda is what you can refer to as a protege a protege of masuji ono he's yet another student of masuji ono but when you're comparing to when you're comparing to shintaro this one now is promising and uh when people are getting into those propagandist kind of painting he seems to be a man of his own mind he did not uh follow suit therefore masuji ono reported him to the authorities and he was turned uh, and he was detained for his anti patriotic activities the failure to paint such kind of aggressive paintings he was now being seen as someone who is not patriotic among the character traits of kuroda let's talk about him as kind generous Kuroda after one of his students he was already no longer his student Enchi was no longer his student but then Enchi had been had been put out he had been evicted for throwing paint on the tatami we see that Kuroda takes him in in his own house that is someone who is kind he is also unforgiving ono after he has betrayed Kuroda they run into each other on a certain rainy day he does not bow in respect and even when ono reaches out through a letter that he would want that they reacquaint themselves he goes ahead and writes an unfeeling kind of letter and he expresses the fact that he would not want to re-establish any links with any links with ono that brings him out as unforgiving what you did to me informing on me that i was even arrested i've not forgotten the facts we are still looking at Kuroda as being sarcastic. There's a painting that Kuroda had done and he was calling the painting a patriotic spirit. But let's look at the details of the painting. The details of the painting were that people were drinking and making merry, laughing boisterously, but then he goes ahead and he names that painting the patriotic spirit. If you've not noted, he was being sarcastic. What is patriotic about drinking, laughing loudly? Nothing patriotic about it. He was being he was being sarcastic about the whole matter. 
up to this point, we take a break. When you come back, we shall further delve into other characters that we are living, uh, that we are, we've not yet done. Until next time, it's a goodbye.